diving underwater caves is dangerous business, and even more risky if the caves have never been explored. But that's what biologists Joe Yeager and Abel Perez Gonzalez have come to Cuba to do. They're on an expedition to discover new species by diving as many caves as possible in just three weeks. But first, they've got to find the caves. Today, they're following a tip from a local farmer and crossing their fingers. They're an hour from the nearest paved road. So how do you find a cave? Like many islands in the Caribbean, Cuba is primarily limestone. And wherever there's soft, porous limestone, there are caves. Think of an ocean in the middle of the jungle. An extraordinary saltwater ecosystem far from the coastline. That's what these caves offer. Several kilometers in, the farmer's tip pays off, and the team discovers a beautiful pool of blue water. The tropical storm adds a little drama, but doesn't stop the process. They lower their heavy equipment, using a system of ropes and pulleys, and take the plunge. There are so many new species out there to be described that, I mean, every time we go into a new cave, we find new species. Thousands of years ago, the cave roof collapsed, and this pool of fresh water formed from centuries of tropical rainstorms. But the scientists spot evidence that this was once a dry cave, stalactites formed by dripping water. Abel's light picks up a creature often found inside Cuban caves, a blind cave fish. Yo creo que debe ser la I believe this is probably the species Lucifer parentatus, the most widely distributed cave fish in Cuba. Many millions of years ago, the ancestors of this fish probably swam somewhere in the salt water of the open ocean. Through the process of evolution, the fish adapted to living in fresh water and to total darkness. In the absence of light, eyes are useless. Animals that live in caves are called troglobites. And troglobitic adaptations are those changes that these animals have undergone through millions of years. They've lost their eyes and their pigmentation, or their eyes have become greatly reduced. Another adaptation that we see is their senses are more finely tuned. Because fresh water weighs less than salt water, the two don't mix. As Abel and Jill descend deeper, they reach the distinct division between the layers, called the halocline. Below the halocline is the heavier salt water. Abel signals Jill. He's found another fish swimming in and out of the halocline. This one seems different from the fish they just saw. It lingers in the salt water. It's a darker color and appears to have a rudimentary eye. Could it be a new species? Esta especie está sin describir todavía. This species has yet to be described. Esta especie que vive en agua salada. This fish seems to live in salt water and have characteristics that are closer to its salt water ancestors. The interesting thing about this cave is that for the first time we see both species together. Up until now, this is the only cave where we've seen these two fish in the same place. momento, esta es la única cueva donde conocemos que pueden vivir estas dos especies en un mismo lugar. Abel sets out to capture the new fish for more detailed study topside. At the expedition's conclusion, the team succeeded in finding a new species. This is indeed a new cave fish. Another clue towards unlocking the mysterious evolution of Cuba's caves. 
sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs, taking science and exploration into the new millennium. For the best subscription offers to any National Geographic magazine, log on to nationalgeographic.com slash magazines.